at one thing first. How does Paul, Paul start it out? He starts out with the cross. This is the message, Corinthians. Because the Corinthians had some issues. They had some problems. Some, some serious ones. Now, a little church like this doesn't see problems like that, do we? A little church like this wouldn't have those kind of issues. We, we've, we've learned from the Scriptures. And we, we're not going to make those same mistakes, right? We just make a bunch of others. <laughs> so he starts out with the preaching of the cross. Now here, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Now he's going to get to the nitty gritty here. What is this good news? Spell it out for us, Paul. Which I preached unto you, which you've also received, and wherein you stand. And now I want to show you, I just want to point out here that in this first verse, it talks about what are some of these, what are some of the things that, that uh, are associated with the gospel? What's he say first? That I did what with this gospel? Declare. I preached it to you. Preached it. The gospel is meant to be preached. Teaching can come later. But you know, sometimes we, get, we, when we, when we say, okay, I'm going to witness to this person. And we start a little dialogue and they say, well, what about Cain's wife? Where did Cain get his wife? You don't really think that jo Jonah was in the whale of a real fish, do you? What they're doing is they're trying to get us. They're trying to get us sidetracked. We call them a rabbit trail, right? Paul says, I don't want to know anything except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. See, because once they come to, to, the, to, the, to acknowledging that Jesus died for you, well, why did He die for me? Because you're a sinner. You need a Savior. Man does not want to say, I was wrong. I am wrong. My lifestyle is wrong. That's what the, the cross is an affront to that, to your lifestyle. To the way that you think things should be. The cross is your only hope. If you think that you can play games with Jesus, you're mistaken. You, you, you have missed it. To think that you can just say, yeah, I'm saved, that's my ticket. I'm going to live the way that I want to live. I got my ticket right here. Well, you're in dangerous waters. You are in dangerous waters. To think that you can just take what Jesus has done for you and to squander it. There's a, a, a Christian song written, it's called Hosea's Wife. And it said, we are, the chorus says, we are Hosea's wife. We are squandering this life. You know, think about Hosea's wife, right? Joined to a good man and squandered it. Didn't do what was right. Now, he did get her back, right? He did buy her back. He redeemed her. But you can't play games. You can't just be on the fringe. Right? It's what the message was about on uh, from Romans 8. Romans 8 is about believers who are serious about following God. If you're not serious, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be like that seed. He went out to sow the seed, right? He's the, 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 the sower is sowing. Some seed, immediately the enemy comes. The birds come and they eat it up. And it brings forth no fruit. You put down a seed for fruit, right? That's the whole purpose of it. Here's some more seed going out. It's shallow ground. All of a sudden, man, it shoots up. Oh, I love Jesus. This is good. I'm with a group of people that, that love me and, and are helping me. Amen. Amen. Can somebody say amen with me? Amen. amen. And then, a little bit of persecution comes. And then, they realize, hey, the way I'm living my life's wrong. You, you mean it's not right to steal things from work? But that, but that boss doesn't pay me right. That boss, is, he's unfair to me. You mean that's wrong? You mean I'm... I'm living with my girlfriend 
and we're acting like we're married? That's wrong? Well, brother, we love each other. Love don't have anything to do with it. Righteousness. It's about righteousness, not about your love. Every girl I ever met, I thought I loved. Right? Every pretty girl that I see walk by when I was a younger man, I love them. <laughs> Hello, I love you. What's your name? Yeah. yeah, no, it has to do with righteousness. And then all of a sudden, what happens? The sun comes out, persecution, and it withers and it dies. And it produces no fruit. The end result is the same, just as if that bird came and took that seed up. The only thing with this one is it had a little bit more of a show. You know? It had just a little bit more of a show. But when it comes right down to it, it produced nothing. Then you know the other soil. Thorn, th thorns come up, choke it out. Deceitfulness of riches carries this world, choking it out. So, but the gospel must be preached if people are to hear it. You don't have to say, well, I'm going to go read five books on how to win people to Christ. I'm going to go, do, and, and I've read them. I've read the books. How to preach, I mean, how to uh, witness, how to do all that thing. But you know what you need? You just need to return to the simplicity that's in Christ. Yeah. Preach the gospel. How do you preach the gospel? He says, now hold on, he says, I preached it which you received. The gospel must be received for it to bear fruit. Right? Now, we can have, I've had people who I've been, uh, been uh, helped out because they said, I want to serve the Lord. And I've invested my time into their life. I've invested my money into them. You know, excuse me, <laughs> doing this all unto the Lord. I've invested these things into them. And they just said, you know, that they were, they were hyper-religious really fast. You know what I mean by that? Everything was, oh, amen, and, and praise God. And, and, now, I'm not saying that's bad. I don't want you to get, get me wrong. But to me, many times when I see that, it's just like a little warning signal to me where they're just getting uh, a little caught up in the moment. Now, so, I've invested all these things into it. Uh, time, money, energy, teaching, and then, they didn't receive it. To receive it is more than just an acknowledgement. Receiving in the Bible means that you take it. Receiving the engrafted word, that you take that word and you act upon it. If you don't, it's not going to bear fruit. There must be a receiving of it. Paul spoke to the Thessalonians and says, you received us. And look, that was a fruitful church. Very fruitful church. He says, and wherein you stand. So the gospel is to be preached, it's to be received, and it's to be, you're supposed to stand upon it. That means you're supposed to live it. The gospel is so that you can walk in newness of life. The gospel is for the victorious Christian. It has the power for you to live a victorious life. Anything else you have to say about it, why, it's not, why you're not victorious, or why it doesn't work, is a big fat excuse. If you're struggling against sin, it's because you love it. It's because you like it. I mean, that's really the bottom line. Because if you're a born-again believer, You've been freed from the power of sin. The Bible speaks about you have to hate sin, hate iniquity, and love righteousness. You know, I know the struggles that I have occasionally with things that would be sinful. It's because I kind of like it. <laughs> Nobody ever said sin was, was uh, unpleasant. It's actually pleasurable for a season, isn't it? So you have to say, I hate it. God, teach me to hate it. 
He that loved the 